Hello. Hello, is this Felix? Yes. Hello, Felix. This is Dustin Wilmes from KMSU Radio. How you doing? Good. How are you? I am excellent. It's great to talk with you today. All right. Sounds great. So let's go for it. And uh, let me close my computer door room so nobody comes and bother me like a dog that I want to bark. Okay. While we're talking. <laughs> yeah, I'm ready to go. I'm waiting for you to, uh, you know, ask <laughs> what you want. To go ahead and go for it. And uh, we'll talk. let's talk. Okay, well, I know you were born in Rome and trained as a, a circus performer early on. Can you tell us a bit about that? Yeah, well, I came from Italy in 1955, and I joined the uh, Ringling Brothers Barnum & Billy Circus. For I worked with them for about six, seven years. And then in uh, 1962, I moved to uh, Los Angeles, California, and that's when I became, when I started to you know, work in the movie industry. So, uh, yeah, I, I know I started working in the movie industry and uh, uh, my f- doing stunt, stunt work for a lot of ki- little, little kids, you know, my size. Uh, you know, those days they had a, they used to plus lots of kids. So now they don't anymore. They don't want nothing to do. Uh, <laughs> they don't want no part of the kids screaming all over the place. I don't think the director, they have a, uh, the, uh, I don't think they like to use kids anymore. So, uh, you know, but I, that's how I started out. Working stunt, stunt, doing stunts. Then, uh, then I went into um, with the Adams family. Uh, that's and, you know, and I, I worked in, uh, I worked in L.A. for about forty-five years. So. Yeah. So, did you always want to become an actor, or how did that uh, lead from the circus into into Hollywood? Well, the way it happened, I wasn't really thinking about being anything. I mean, I just I need to work. But the thing was. When I left the circus in in Los Angeles, I stayed uh, somewhere. I was staying at the uh, uh, one of the motel from Sandy Koufax. Used to be the Dodger, one of the pitcher. Sure. Uh, so, and I went to work for a family that uh, they did. Uh, they used to do publicity when the circus came to town to uh, Los Angeles, and like you know, publicity, they do uh, advertising. So I went to work for with him for them and. Um, uh, one day I was uh, at the office uh, answering the phone or whatever. Uh, a gentleman, a gentleman from MGM came over. One of uh, my boss's friend came over, and he said, uh, "You know what? They're looking for some little people to do some stunts of one of the movies that MGM is going to produce." So, uh, you know, at that time I don't have, I didn't have a car, I didn't have much of anything. You know, I was only in this country a few years from from fifty five to sixty two. So a friend of mine drove me to uh, MGM Studio, and uh, they picked me as one of the stunt guys to double a little boy. And the movie was called a Ticklish Affair uh, with the Carolyn Jones, the Shirley Jones, and uh, Gig Young, Rick Buttons, uh, Edgar Buchanan. Uh, and I was doubling this little boy flying on a balloon. They put a balloon on my shoulder, like you know, a harness with a helium balloon. And the guy was saying... This this how we're gonna to go to the moon one of these days. This how we're gonna fly. So okay, they got me in these balloons, and all of a sudden the rope that I was hanging on it it broke, and I'm taking off. Wow! So I'm taking off. <laughs> I'm taking off. You know that's how the movie went. And then after that, uh, I worked the. Uh, I got an interview with the Buck uh, Adams family, uh, the Adams family for Cousinette, and that's when uh, I started working Adams family. The I saw Garen Jones again, because my first movie, she was in it. But I never knew that I was going to see her again a couple of months later. So, and that's how I started out. And then after that, uh, the movie The Russians Are Coming came, and I did a stunt, stunt work for a little boy by the name uh, Johnny Whittaker, in which he was the little boy in Family Affair. Now, I'm talking about 45 years ago. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Long, long, long time ago. <laughs> So, uh, and after that, everything came along. You know, it took me a little while to really get some good jobs, but it kept me busy, it kept me working, and uh, the money wasn't a lot of money, but, you know, it didn't cost an arm and a leg for to drive a car, because, you know, the gas was, what, 24 cents a gallon. Sure. Com- compared to $5 now in California, you know. So uh, I I, uh, I was happy you know, to do it. I was, you know, I met a lot of friends, and, and I lived in California from... Uh, uh, nine, uh, from 1962 to up to 2003, when I moved to Las Vegas, I moved. You know, my family. We moved to Vegas, and okay. that's where we live now. 
But, uh, you know, a Star Wars came, Buck Rogers, and all kinds of stuff. But a lot of things happened, slowly, but I got some good movies. You know, thank God for that, you know, for the Screen Actor Guild uh, Union. And, you know, got a nice, decent pension. And, and, you know, I'm retired, and we'll Social Security money, and I keep going. And also keeps me busy doing, you know, signing convention, autograph convention. Yeah, you definitely have had a lot of uh, a lot of iconic roles under your belt, and you mentioned Adam's family. Let's uh, maybe go back to that a little bit and the role of cousin it. Uh, what are some of your memories uh, of being on set when you were when you were with the Adams family? Adams family was fun. Uh, let me tell you how how cousin it became cousin it. Uh, my my agent sent me one day. She sent me to a studio for an interview. It was on Friday Friday evening, Friday afternoon, whatever. Uh, she said, Felix, they want to see you at uh, uh, it's one of the studios on, on Santa Monica Boulevard in Hollywood. So I arrived at the studio. It was like in the afternoon. and um, I went into the, the office, and there were two uh, nice-looking gentlemen talking to each other. I got in, and uh, I get into the office, that, and they were looking at each other, and they saw me, and they said, well, uh, that's it. And I says, well, what, what do you mean? Uh, she, they said, Come back Monday, and uh, you got the job. Come back Monday, and you were going to, you know, you start working. And they didn't tell me anything. They didn't say what I was supposed to be doing. Just They just said, come back on Monday, you got the job. I said, okay, thank you. I'll see you <laughs> Monday. Monday morning, I arrived at the studio early in the morning, like 8 o'clock, 8, 8, 8.30. I arrived there, and the wardrobe people, they put a wig on my head and derby hat and a pair of sunglasses and cousin it became alive but the fun thing happened one day while we were actually we were, I was sitting off the set waiting for the director to call me on the scene and um, I was just sitting there waiting and so all of a sudden the director called me up he says Felix you please come to, on, the, on, the, on the set you know we we need you for the next uh, the next scene I said okay so I got up out of the chair I got up and walked towards the camera I was fully dressed and all of a sudden I heard this really loud uh, voice uh, somebody said, there he goes, Frankie Lane's toupee. And I didn't, I didn't think about anything. So I went on the set, I did the scene wherever, and, and after the, the scene was over, I asked someone, I said, hey, uh, do you know who that guy was? I mean, I heard somebody say, there, there he goes, Frankie Lane's toupee. It was a Bob Hope came over and visit. Wow. He was a give on the set, and he made the joke. You know, he saw me walk, and I looked like... I got a toupee walking off the, <laughs> on, the, on, the, on the middle of the middle stage, and he made this funny remark, and the people were laughing. But the funny part was with Jackie Coogan, uh, we uh, he ruined so many scenes by falling asleep. Jackie Coogan used to fall asleep like standing up almost. Wow! Every time he would start filming, all of a sudden you hear somebody snoring, <laughs> and there he was, Jackie Coogan, sleeping on his chair. I mean, completely out, snoring really loud. And the director used to go by this chair and slap him in the head. You know, and he, had no, he was bald and kind of slapped, tapped the head. He said, come on, Jackie, stop, you know, stop screwing up all, my, all the scenes, you know. And every time we do, you know, we work and do a scene, and you, you start snoring. So I said, okay, okay. And then five, ten minutes later, it's, there he goes again. So they used to kick him out of the set. And he said, okay, go to your dressing room and... We'll call you when we need you. But he ruined so many, so many scenes <laughs> by snoring. Well, and when it comes to the to the Adams family, I mean, that show is beloved by so many people, and even 50 years later, we're still talking about it. I mean, did you ever think that this show would be as popular as it is after all these years? Never, never. I never thought about anything like that. Uh, I, I, yeah, you're right. I'm still thinking about 45 years later or whatever that people still talking about and uh, and the fun thing is when I go to a different convention like the one I'm becoming in Minnesota the people are going to be so surprised because they've never seen me out of the costumes you know I mean I've done things out of the costumes but I was never uh, out of the Adams family I never was exposed you know they never see people they never seen my face sure so they'll be really surprised when they come to my table say hello to me and they all surprised. Me. My God! Oh, you were cousin Ed? I said, Yeah, I was cousin Ed. Yes. <laughs> uh, they they get really surprised, and they're still talking about today. Uh, and I never thought about it uh, because when I went to work, 
I just did my job, and I went home, and I said, well, it's just another job, and, you know, it's paying my bills, and that's all I needed. And, and I didn't think about it, what was, was going to happen 40, 45 years later. I never thought about it, you know. Well, and another question I wanted to ask you, I know I, right around that same time, The Munsters was also being filmed. Was there any sort of, uh, I don't know if you'd call it bad blood, or maybe just a you know conscious effort to try to outdo that show? I you know what I don't think so. Those days, I mean, nobody had any bad blood against anybody. Uh, as a matter of fact, I even doubled uh, Butch Patrick, the you know the one that played uh, Eddie Monster on one of the episodes. Oh, okay. When uh, when he was on top of his roof in the house in the night, at night I don't know what he was doing up there, flying. He was flying the kite, and all of a sudden the wind, the wind, and knocked him down. And the father happened to be walking down below, and he caught him on his arms. And that was me doing the stunts for him. Uh, uh, Butch Patrick out of the monster. We got, you know what? Everything got canceled. The same thing. Everything got canceled at the same time. Everything that year. Yeah. Adam's family got canceled. Uh, uh, the monster got canceled. A lot of the TV show got canceled, and I don't know why. I don't understand why they did that. Yeah, that is strange that it would all uh, wrap up all at the same time. It must have been somebody didn't like that kind of style or something, maybe. Mm-hmm. Well, we don't know because in 1977 they tried to revamp the Adams family. Yeah. Uh, we did. Uh, we taped it. It wasn't on tape, but nobody liked it because it wasn't really that great. Also, we lost all the writers. We had a different writers, though, you know, in '77, and the, the two kids they were growing up, so they had to use smaller kids, and they played the mom and dad, and I think it went right, you know, so they didn't like it, but. The way I understand, I don't know if it was real or not, or sure or not, but the way I understand, they were going to bring it back in color, in which I, I don't think Adam's family will look good in color. Because, the sea, because all the set, you know, the, the, the rooms, uh, all the weird-looking uh, things hanging on the wall, I don't think it would look good in color. So it didn't really do anything when, we try to, when they try to tape it. Yeah. Yeah. It- is it true? Was the original set, was it all pink mostly? I thought I had read that once. You know what? I don't know about it because I came in uh, I came in late in the show. Okay. You know, I came in like, uh, oh, I think my episode was number 18. Because they already did some episodes before they brought me in. Sure. And that's the reason I'm not in the, some of the publicity photo, you know, from the beginning. Because I, was, I wasn't there, so they got this idea. You know, to bring me back, bring me in, you know, late in the, in the first season. But I don't, I never heard that. Um, it wasn't really, I don't really know if it was pink or whatever. I never thought about it. Uh, I know it was kind of, kind of gloomy, dark inside, you know, really weird looking things, you know, and the suit of armor and the, uh, the, the people who, I mean, the fish sticking out of the wall and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. But other than that, you know, I don't remember being, well, I didn't even pay no attention to it. Because like I said, you know, I just went to work and it was a job for me. I never thought uh, that it was going to, 40 years later, people were going to talk about it, ask a question, because I didn't know anything about it. And I, you know, I, I went to do my job and I was, it was fun and I went home and I just left uh, all the problem beyond me, you know, on set. We, but we never had any problems uh, with the Adams family, I mean, we every one of us, all of us, we got along very well. Uh, we never had any screaming or hollering at each other, nothing at all, nothing whatsoever. We all got along, just like a regular, regular fun family. That's what it was. Sure. Yeah, and we had a lot of fun, you know, work with John Aston and uh, Carol and Jonah was, oh my God, a wonderful lady, what a really wonderful professional. Uh, Jackie Coogan, I mean, he, you know, he was, uh, he was, he played with uh, Charlie Chaplin when he was five years old, the, the kid. Yeah, uh, yeah. And, uh, I mean, you know, those people, they're well, uh, they're well known, well trained, and, and you get respect, you know, you respect them. That Ted Cassidy, for example, was a great guy, you know, a big, great guy, and like a little teddy bear. You know, we all got along very well, yeah. And you mentioned some of your other roles, and you really have an impressive resume. I know you, you know, did Buck Rogers and Planet of the Apes, and you did some work yeah. on E.T. and Indiana Jones. You know, that's right. just right. Uh, yeah, Star Trek, Star Wars. I was on the original Star Trek episode of the case. Well, yeah, yeah. Is it possible for you to to pick a favorite role out of all these, uh, you know, iconic you know shows? What? <laughs> you know, it's it's really hard. It's really hard to do. A lot of people ask me the same question. 
I can't say, yeah, I got this because I like this better. To me, all the show that I did, I had a lot of fun working with people. Uh, and the way I tell the people, said, well, this was such a thing, my favorite role. My favorite show was, like, when you go to work, for, uh, like everybody else, if you go to work on a job and you don't like the job or you don't like the people you work with, that's not your favorite, right? Sure. You know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Okay. The same thing with me. You know, you go to work with that wonderful people, wonderful group of actors, and that's your favorite job, your favorite role, because you got along. You know, there's no... No, uh, uh, no uh, arguments between everybody gets along with each other. That was my favorite. But you know, I, I would say I lean over like I would say the Adams family between Adams family and Buck Rogers. Those were the my two my two uh, best ones. So that was great, you know. Yeah, and you mentioned uh, playing an Ewok in Return of the Jedi. So I mean, you really have found a way to be on a lot of these iconic shows and just kind of reinvented your career, you know, throughout the years. So that's really impressive. Yeah, I mean, uh, Return of the Jedi. That was I was the guy, the glider, the Ewok on the glider, throwing us rocks on the stormtroopers. Right, right. I I was the guy that did it, all the flying, and I was hanging on the you know cables and doing that. Uh, we did uh, all that at the Redwoods up in uh, Northern California. We filmed a lot of stuff for there. That was a good show, too, because I got to meet so many little friends about it, so many little people from England, like Kenny Baker, uh, all the rest of them, you know, who want to play R2-D2. Uh, we, we became very good friends, and we do, uh, we do convention together once here and there, once in a while. You know, we see each other, and it was, it was fun. So that was a fun show to do. Yeah, and you mentioned uh, coming to uh, Crypticon in Minnesota here October 24th through the 26th, and it sounds like you do a lot of these kind of conventions. So have you been through Minnesota before, or is this your first time? I think I've been, well, I've been in Minnesota before. I've been in Duluth, Minnesota, I believe. Uh, Duluth, right? Yep, yep, that's here. Uh-huh. I worked there with the circus many years ago, but I never done any convention up there. So this is my, uh, uh, wait a minute, no, Minnesota, um, no, i never done a convention over there. This is my first one, and I can't wait to see. Uh, I can't wait to get there, and I got to see my some of my friends. Uh, uh, Carl uh, Stroiken will be there from. Uh, he played the Lurch on the movies. Adam's family. Oh sure, sure, okay. Yeah, he, he's going to be there, and my, one of my friend, one of my friend, he had to cancel because his wife not feeling well. Uh, Dick Warlock, you know, he played Mike Meyer on Halloween. Yeah, uh, yeah, he was supposed to be there, but unfortunately, his wife is not feeling well. Uh, she's having a somewhat a problem swallowing, uh, so I don't know if she needs a surgery. What happened? And they had to cancel it out. And I, I could not. I was so happy the way I, you know, got to see him, but unfortunately, he's not going to be there. So that's kind of uh, kind of loss, you know, that I I'm not yet to see my friends. But you know what? I can't wait to get up there. I hope it's not going to be cold. Well, I'm going to bring. I'll make sure I'll bring a jacket. Yeah, you might want to do that for sure. <laughs> yeah, in the end of October, it's going to be, I don't think it's going to be that warm up there. Well, yeah, definitely yeah. looking yeah. forward to, to seeing you there, and I know a lot of people are as well. And again, right. that's uh, 24th through the 26th. I know you mentioned you're retired now, but uh, do you have anything else coming up maybe or, or any projects that you're working on? Well, all right now I'm doing uh, this, uh, these things. I'm doing these conventions, uh, the 18, 17 and 18 of uh October, I'm going to be in Boise, Idaho for another convention. And then at the 24th through the 26th, I'll be in, um, in Minnesota with you guys. And uh, I can't wait to get the, up there. So. Excellent. Yeah, it sounds like you're staying busy for sure. Well, I tell you, I used to do a lot more convention, but the economy really kind of ruined everything, you know. Sure. Uh, some of the conventions are kind of disappearing. It's not really, but I used to do so many of them, you know when the economy was a lot better. So the economy is doing a, you know, a job to, on everything, you know, like people losing their homes and people don't have the money to go out and spend. So, you know, they try to save it and stay home. And, but I do here and there. I like to travel and, uh, and I like to meet my fans because, you know what, if it wasn't for the fans, I wouldn't be able to, you know, I wouldn't be talking to you doing this, you know. They don't want to make the movie. They don't want to go, they don't want to go to the theater and pay them, you know. For the movie to be made. Sure. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's uh, it's going to be great to uh, to run into you there, and hopefully um, we'll be able to chat. And, uh, again, I want to thank you, Felix, for being on with us today. Are you going to be there? Gonna make sure you're going to be there, right? I hope so. I hope to be there, oh. yep. 
Well, okay, we'll talk to you when we get there. All right, sounds good. Thanks again, Felix. It's been great having okay. you on. Okay, you're welcome. Have a good evening. All right, you, you too. Bye-bye. Okay, bye.